My name is Sanjay Gupta. I'm a cardiologist in York. Today's video is on the subject of calcium channel blockers. So you've probably heard of medications like amlodipine, diltiazem, or verapamil. These are often prescribed for blood pressure, chest pain, or heart rhythm problems. They all belong to a class of drugs called calcium channel blockers. Today, I want to explain what these medications are, how they work, when we use them, and some things to watch out for. So what do calcium channel blockers actually do? To understand this, we need a very simple idea from biology. Your heart and blood vessels rely on calcium to contract. Calcium flows into cells through special gates called calcium channels. When we block these gates, muscles don't contract as strongly. This has two major effects. Blood vessels relax and widen, lowering the blood pressure. So pressure is force divided by area. If you increase the area by making the blood vessels relax more, then the pressure will drop. So calcium blockers will lower the blood pressure. And they can slow the heart down as well. So the heart beats more gently and slowly, reducing oxygen demand. When do we use them? Calcium channel blockers are used in three main scenarios. Number one, high blood pressure, especially effective in older patients or those with stiff arteries. Amlodipine is one of the most commonly prescribed for this. Number two, angina. They help prevent angina attacks by reducing the heart's workload. Number three, abnormal heart rhythms. Verapamil and diltiazem can slow down fast heart rates, particularly in conditions such as atrial fibrillation. There are different types of calcium channel blockers that you should be aware of. There are two main categories. The first category are dihydropyridines, amlodipine, nifedipine, these are dihydropyridines, and they primarily target the blood vessels and therefore lower the blood pressure. Now, in doing so, they can sometimes cause a reflex tachycardia, a slightly higher heart rate. So you take them to lower the blood pressure, but you find that the heart rate goes up. And some people notice that and don't like it. The second group are the non-dihydropyridines. These are medications such as verapamil and diltiazem. These act more on the heart and slow down the heart rate and reduce rhythm abnormalities. They are used in arrhythmias and angina. You should be aware of some of the common side effects with calcium blockers. Most people tolerate them well, but potential side effects include swollen ankles, especially with medications such as amlodipine, headaches or flushing, constipation, which is more seen with verapamil, fatigue or dizziness, and bradycardia if the heart rate drops too low, again seen mainly with verapamil or diltiazem. When should you be cautious? Uh, these medications may not be ideal for people with heart failure with a reduced ejection fraction and some forms can worsen heart failure. They are not ideal for patients with very slow heart rhythms. They shouldn't really be used in people who are already taking beta blockers because combining the non-dihydropyridines, which reduce the heart rate, with the beta blocker, which also reduces the heart rate, can overly suppress the heart. I think if you are on a calcium blocker, you should always check with your doctor if you feel dizzy, faint, or if your heart rate drops below 50 beats per minute consistently. Calcium blockers are a cornerstone of cardiovascular treatment. They're generally reliable, effective, and widely used. Whether you're on one for blood pressure, chest pain, or heart rhythm abnormalities, they work by gently calming your heart and softening or loosening your arteries. As always, it's not just about taking a pill. It's about understanding what it's doing for you. And the more you understand your heart, the better you can take care of it. So I hope you found this useful. I'd love to hear your thoughts. And once again, thank you for taking the time to listen to me. All the best.